intergalactic space travel, interstellar traveling, and clean space debris. Now, these are just few examples of some super fantastic science fiction concepts we've all heard of. While these are technological pursuits which show human ingenuity, we sometimes need to pause and look around us. We need to consider how our projects are changing the lives of people who are often overlooked by this society. Now, consider for instance your maid who does your housekeeping. She might probably not even have a bank account. This is a slum right next to this auditorium and I'm pretty sure most of you haven't even noticed it. We have witnessed different kinds of inequalities based on gender, economic disparity, and caste. However, today I'm going to talk about something which we haven't heard of, or probably not too easy to spot. Inequality based on reach of technology. Now, um, I am Sai Shri Akonde. I am a fourth year biomedical engineering student and I am also a research coordinator uh, under Dr. Arun Shambhar. Now, he is my mentor and he has taught me that whatever your age might be and whatever field of study you might be in, we all can come up with innovative solutions and ideas with a cost effective twist. He makes students do what I like to call socially inspired projects. Now this is the term, Jagar, which we Indians are completely familiar with. There, it, we use this term in all instances. To explain Jagar, I'm just going to show you a simple picture. This is an innovative, cost-effective, time-effective way of traveling. What we need to understand out here is that Jagar is simple. The very meaning being that finding simple yet elegant solutions to problems around us. And I strongly believe that putting forward Jagad as a mindset or a way of life can change the world as we know it. Now, let us understand what sustainable development is. Now, before we go into sustainable development, let us see the definition of sustainability as given in the Oxford Dictionary. I want you, I want you all to pay close attention to this. All right? So, um, I want you to read this and completely scrap it off your mind. Because sustainability is different for different people. For some, it might be using a glass bottle instead of a plastic one. For others, it might be simply recycling waste. For me, sustainability is about putting forward affordable healthcare solutions and reaching remote areas of the world. You need to reinvent the definition of sustainability for yourself. And to do that, I'm going to show you what I call the circle of sustainable innovation. Each segment of this circle is going to teach you Jugaad and how to apply it as a frame of mind to bring about solutions to social problems. Now, this is not really, uh, this is not really a foolproof way of becoming successful, but I'm pretty sure most of you can be great innovators following these advices. As students, one of our biggest queries is, how do I start a project? Where do I find the inspiration for an idea? I have one answer for that question. You need to turn adversity into opportunity. I see students with fantastic ideas wanting to start a company. How can you start a company without even going through the process of innovation? So just this week, I met these couple of biomedical engineers and they had this idea. Um, they came up with this problem statement and then I asked them, where did you find this idea from? And they said, oh, we sat and we visualized the problem. How can you visualize the problem? They also expected doctors to help them out in finding solutions. So do not solve problems based on a fictional, fictional idea, right? Search for problems, search around you. Don't find solutions to problems which do not even exist. So this brings me out to saying uh, one of the projects which I have done. So India has 9.1 million unvaccinated children under the age of five. What we see is that these, the, this particular number belongs mostly to the migrant community. Migrant workers travel from place to place and lose their health cards. Now this is a major issue. How many of you remember what vaccine was given to you as a kid? I don't remember what vaccines were given to me. This becomes an issue
issue, especially for migrant workers, the fact that they are not able to complete the complete immunization schedule of their children and they face life-threatening diseases. We came up with a very simple solution for this called Vaxidate. Vaxidate also won New Zealand High Commission Sustainability Challenge. So Vaxidate is a two-pronged solution. It, it consists of a Nazaria bead and a digital tag. Nazaria bead is something, as you can see in the picture, it's usually worn around babies' hands in India. The digital tag stores all the information of vaccines given to the baby. How do we do that is with our custom-made Vaxibead application. The mechanism of using Vaxibead is very simple. It's as simple as one, two, three. All you need to do is scan, update, and sync. A health worker is going to use Vaxibead application and tap on to the bracelet that the baby is wearing. And she, they will get access to all the information written onto the bead in the digital tag. Now, if the health worker wants to see what vaccine, what, what, if the health worker administered new vaccines, all the health worker needs to do is tap the bead again, and there you go. All the vaccines which are administered today are registered into the bead. This is also stored onto a central server, as you can see out here. This is also stored onto a central server where you can change and keep editing the way you want. So this is a very simple technology. It consists of nothing but a simple bead which can store vital information of all <coughs> health records possible. What we understand from this is that no matter how simple things are, you need to make it cost effective and ensure that it reaches right people. You have to be able to talk to your stakeholders and understand their problems. You need to make your products super user friendly. Now, let's think about how to make products better. You can make something lighter, cheaper, brighter, faster. These are all innovations. But remember that these are supposed to reach people who you have made this for. This brings me to another concept called design thinking. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard this in conferences or business books. Now, design thinking is nothing but developing products which are visually appealing, which drives the revenue. Though this is a fantastic concept for driving revenue, is it really innovative and cost effective enough to reach out to people? I believe that we need to change the philosophy of design thinking to social design thinking. We need to make products which are visually appealing, but at the same time are actively affordable. Affordability is the key. In underdeveloped and developing nations, this magic of science and technology is usually restricted to the rich. It's important that we transcend the economic barriers and reach out science and technology to people who deserve it. Now this brings me on to an example of technological innovation which focuses on design thinking. Now, as you see out here, this is a TENS machine. A uh, TENS machine is nothing but an electric stimuli producing machine. So doctors use it for pain relief and pa for pain relief treatments. Now this machine is super expensive and the treatment cost also increases because of this. What if I tell you that this sophisticated machine can be put in something as mundane as a marker. All you need to do is use a buck converter which produces the electric stimuli as soon as you flip the switch. So something as complex as a TENS machine can be put into something as simple as a marker which reduces the entire cost of treatment. Let's take this a step forward and talk about creating frugal enterprises. Now, social enterprises are really very important for the fact that we need to reach out to vast majorities of, of the population. Frugal enterprises do not really seek to wow customers with their super complex designs. All they want to do is reach out to their customers and provide cost-effective solutions. They tap the untapped market and reach out to people. Now, India has been facing a major problem of diabetes. With diabetes, there are also other complications like diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Now, this particular problem starts off with losing sensation of your foot and with unhealthy foot care regimes, you can get ulcers and gangrene. This is a major problem. 
Now, I have come up with a solution to make an insole which can see the prognosis of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. All this insole has is basic three electronic components. It has a battery, a Bluetooth module, and a vibrator. These vibrators vibrate at random intervals of time, and all the patient needs to do is click on the app whenever they feel the vibration. This app also stores in the entire data of whenever the patient has clicked and gives it to the doctor. Now the doctor can see how the prognosis of diabetes, diabetic peripheral neuropathy started by this particular app. Now, this invention has nothing but a simple foot sole which has been tweaked to give a beautiful result. This is the app as you can see. Now, um, it's very important that we understand that while innovating, there are going to be circumstances where you come up with something different altogether. Your goal might be A, but you end up bringing in something else altogether. There were these architecture students who I met and they wanted to reinvent Lego blocks. So they made this beautiful box for keeping the Legos, but their ultimate goal was to reinvent Lego blocks and make them accessible to Indians. So they considered Lego blocks to be super expensive, so they wanted to make something cheaper. What it turned out to be is that they did not really succeed in making actual Lego blocks, but they found a new market altogether by making that beautiful construction box. So there is no fancy word to explain this kind of innovation, but all I want to say is this is called failing forward. You might fail the first time, you might possibly fail the second time, you will also fail the 13th time. But remember that while you are failing, you're always failing forward. You are learning something new. You're learning that there are 10,000 ways how not to make a light bulb. So failing is a process of innovation and this is only going to make you better. Also, ideas by itself worth nothing. You need to be able to build a concept around your idea to reach out to people. Innovation is all about endurance. Innovation is, like I, I like to call, is self-transcendence. Self-transcendence is making yourself a part of this universe and changing it with the concepts you have developed. One of the things which I notice with people is that whenever they come up with an idea, all they want to do is say, I'm going to start making an airplane. I'm going to start making a rocket. Wait, hold on. You need to start with basic miniature versions. You need to start cutting paper, wood, turning steel, and come up with models and miniature versions and designs which you can understand and try to tweak. This is a part of innovation. We seem to be allergic to baking and building things. We should not be. We should always start with making miniature models where we can understand how to move forward with a particular innovation. And trust me, doing this, you're going to learn the essence of innovation and you will be a force to be reckoned and will have ideas worth sharing. Thank you.